You would think that painting autumn trees would be a lot easier. After all, we can use all these wonderful colors now. No more boring greens and searching for that right green. But guess what? We still need to search for that right yellow or orange. Otherwise, it's easy to end up with very flat trees or a very, very busy picture if we actually use all colors at once. And there are some scenes that actually have those colors all at once, all different colors in the trees. So we have to be careful. And here I already have the underpainting on a UART 400 grit paper. And I did the underpainting with hot pastels and then just washed them with isopropyl alcohol. And you can see for the grass, for the sunlit part of the grass, I used orange and for the sky as well. So those are kind of light, bright parts. I did that, but... You can ask, so why didn't you use that for the trees? Because they are glowing, right? But I like to have a little bit of base, kind of darker color in the trees because I can gradually lighten them up, add that lighter color eventually, kind of as a highlight, as a glowing highlight. Not start right with that. So here I'm building the darker areas first. That would be the darker mountain in the distance, which is conveniently very atmospheric and very purplish looking. Well, maybe not so much in the picture, but it's definitely having a hint of blue, a hint of purple, and that is a complementary color. For the yellows so that works out wonderfully and maybe I just want to make sure there's a hint of it showing somewhere through the trees but it probably will be covered up and you can see two pictures here that I'm using because I left more room for the mountain on the right but I wanted to show more of that meadow with the lighter green grass and to show a little bit those trees, darker, smaller trees in the distance. So it's kind of an attempt to create a little bit more depth in a picture because otherwise, okay, there's this big purple dark shape. And what is it? So let's see if that actually helps me. And now it's just creating the mass of darker and mid-tone neutral colors here in the trees and I started also in the foliage a little bit of those kind of orange browns and some olive colors because if I'm just going to take a very bright yellow right away it's just going to be boring it would be just one flat color all around so I need to build up kind of variation of colors and values too because somewhere that foliage is a little bit thicker somewhere it's thinner and is going to be lighter yellow and it is going to show more sunlight passing through it so that's the thinking behind and the tree trunks right now they're just kind of the dark vertical shapes i'm not in the process of refining them yet i just want to have some kind of framework so that i can use it to work around it with my lighter yellows or mid-tone yellows first and that helps but i just have to remember that there's actually a lot of darker color there at the bottom so the same is also there in the distance. There is actually a row of trees there and maybe like showing just tops of those trees catching the sunlight might be interesting. And by the way, both pictures here on the left, they are taken in the same spot, in the same location. And that's from my trip last year to Catskill Mountains. Beautiful place. And a lot of them just had to be taken from there. 
window of a driving car. So not very high resolution sometimes, but you know what? Sometimes you don't really need that perfect reference picture and just interpret what you have. And besides, I don't really follow that closely, the photo reference anyway, or even the scene if I'm outdoors. So it's not really going to stop me. So at this point, I think I build up enough here, enough pigment on the mountain, which I wanted to do. I didn't want it to live just as on the painting. I wanted first to have some kind of base purplish greenish color there so that or grayish so that I can start adding some of that darker orange here and by the way we kind of have here the situation that is close to the backlighting the light is coming from coming from behind but from the side a little bit so we still can see how the shadows are going from right to left a little bit on an angle. And now some orange. So you can see I start with a darker color, a less glamorous color, and then eventually lighten it by bringing more chromatic and lighter color. And at this point, it's really about covering the surface, not so much about making detail, creating the detail. And I also want to make sure I overlap with some of those branches, suggested branches, or in my case, the marks, wider, broader marks. I overlap some of those tree trunks so that they don't look like a fish bone, <laughs> just straight with them bones coming out of it so we definitely want to have some foliage in certain areas covering the tree trunk and the distance the mountain there definitely has some trees also on it and here just kind of neutral dark greenish gray i think suggests that and i also leave some of that purple showing and a little bit lighter purple kind of further away up at the top so maybe that will help but right now as tempting as it is to start creating those beautiful lacy branches against the mountain I have to wait a little bit and of course it helps a lot adding some of that blue color at the top so that I actually can now perceive the whole scene the way it is in a more realistic color, not with the orange sky. And this will help me to see also how to balance those orange colors in the tree. So maybe adding a little bit of that green too, which is kind of autumn green, really. It's more olive it has definitely more orange in it and here just overlaying some of it with the orange so it's just a good base and later when i have some of that glowing color on top of it it's just not going to look flat otherwise if it's just one yellow it's very possible that it's going to end up looking flat and well i have to say of course that if we are dealing, when we are dealing with a backlit or partially backlit situation, we are going to have the foliage looking more flat. So that is going to happen because it's just the light passing through the tree. But still, there will be some areas that are thicker. And here with the negative painting, kind of making these marks and leaving some of their lines basically carving those branches uh, out of the background with a negative painting so you can see how it creates that interesting effect and that's again possible because initially i set up a darker color but what i like about it it's kind of like as if the foliage is in front of that 
branch. So it's not that very dark color that I'm using for the tree trunk, for example, at the bottom that's clearly seen and it is pretty dark, but there's variation, kind of lighter, darker colors within those branches that I just created doing that. And that's pretty cool because anytime we can bring more variety in a picture, it's definitely a good thing when it's not just all monotonous, kind of going on forever. And it's really best to work from main larger shapes towards smaller detail added later. Once we set up those larger shapes, it's easier to see how much detail we need. The meadow, just a little bit of coverage here right now, but I will resolve it more later because it's not just flat, kind of, well, not flat, green with the orange showing from underneath. Well, I also figured that I can show some foliage between the branches, but probably should have gone with a little bit darker or maybe like a little bit more orange color, but probably even darker would be good. But it's addictive once you have that stick of color, you just keep going at it sometimes and don't stop in time. But so far it's still shaping up, it still has some thickness to it, the foliage has some thickness to it definitely, and as long as I keep it, that's actually looking believable that we do have some tree branches, some tree trunks, and very interesting to work right on the flat side of the stick, kind of suggesting the whole branch doing that. And I like it. And as long as you can leave it, not fuss about it too much, I think it just adds to the spontaneous kind of look of the work. And that could be nice. But it's not an easy thing to do, just leave things alone. Here you can see, now I can start adding those lovely suggestions of the thinner branches. Some areas with the foliage where maybe like we have the separate leaves glowing. And I was using the lighter yellows for that. And... Now the tree trunks, they were so far just kind of dark color, but I do want to have maybe like a little bit of a highlight on one side. Maybe it's picking it up a little bit and maybe even model the tree trunk a little bit like a cylinder, like the thicker ones, not the thin tree trunks so much, but the thicker ones. By modeling, I mean show its three-dimensional shape with the shadows and lighter colors. And this one just has, doesn't have actually the foliage, it's just a broken tree, I guess. But I decided to still include it just for the character, why not? And maybe I still need to separate some of those, some of the tree trunks, but right now just adding some of that and a warm gray there just relieves the eye a little bit too because when those tree trunks are just like too dark all over, all around, it's not really convincing either. It's kind of boring and looking too flat. Initially, I blocked them in with that very dark Terry Ludwig eggplant color, but as I'm working, I'm bringing a little bit more color, a little bit more light into them, so they look more alive there in the shadow. Well, right now, my main players are basically there, and let's see here with this very light green. Now I can really light up the grass there, and it's actually 
correct value before it was a little dark but that was on purpose because i still wanted to have some of that suggestion kind of a texture in it that maybe that meadow goes up and down somewhere and catches a little bit more light because we definitely see those trees in the distance they are quite small and that tells us there is quite a bit of a distance before that so a lot of things can happen in that meadow and now just refining some of the tree trunks a little bit in my new course painting autumn i discuss in detail the palette that we use painting autumn which is kind of tricky because these are warm colors and they have their own specific qualities and i talk about how to use them so that we can still create the volume in the trees create the feeling of distance so check out the link in the description below if you are interested to learn all that stuff and also if you enjoy this video so far if it is helpful and exciting if you love the fall colors please give this video a like and also consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't yet right now it's a lot about pastels but there will be more on other mediums as well and i think that corner became a little too dark of course it is dark there on the left but it's kind of became well maybe not so much dark but kind of monotonous dark gray so i need to push some of this darker color maybe show some deeper darker spacing between the tree trunks and that would make it more readable basically and of course we have some shadows we have some texture on the tree trunks maybe adding a little bit of that darker color at the bottom kind of grounds the trees a little bit more there's also a little bit of green there and maybe kind of following the idea that we see a little bit of that green through the tree trunks but i don't know if it's actually reading that way that well but anyway i decided to add a little bit of that color so that i guess to just dilute a little bit of that orange there in the middle i'm sure it will be covered up with something else later and not going to stand out as much as this green right now and there's also that lovely branch or very small tree starting on the left so it kind of adds a splash of color into that area which is otherwise kind of a little bit boring so maybe that's a good thing to add it's one of those lovely details and that will keep the viewer's eye moving around the work and that's what we need because this is kind of like a little bit of a drab area right now so an accent like this is really nice and maybe even there though it probably should be a little bit downplayed there kind of not glowing as much on that side yeah at this point it's mark making time so if i make a mark ideally i wouldn't go over it several times and kind of take the life out of it but sometimes it does happen but particularly with the tree branches that is a great way to kind of keep it more loose more spontaneous looking when we don't just kind of create this dot 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 effect with tiny marks but just make those larger marks and let them be kind of express the whole branch just with one mark and then just add a small details maybe like a few glowing leaves or something within it so that works and here i'm back to some of this darker orange brown basically but still kind of darker orange to me and i even extended that branch so that it kind of interacts with that space of the mountain more because otherwise it was a little bit 
too enclosed. So having that, having that tree protrude more towards the right, be silhouetted, uh, some of that more intricate detail maybe get that silhouetted against those purples later it's coming up. So that just will create maybe a little bit more interest there in that part. And of course those are the complementary colors. So that is going to be glowing. So here they are coming. A little bit of those kind of orange yellows there, a splash of that. I can even get some lighter yellow there. Not going to do the final highlights in that area yet. That would be the last stage. And maybe showing a little bit of that blue, the sky peeking through the tops of the trees. And just a little. It's at the very top, really. And I have to make sure I don't bring that blue too far down where the mountain already is supposed to be. But so far the foliage is pretty thick. And we don't really get to see that much here. But I think that is as low as it should go because otherwise I probably am on a collision course there with that mountain. The, the mountain kind of goes down a little bit more, definitely. So that blue kind of creates a nice mosaic of those warmer and cooler colors together, playing off each other. So I think I like that. And I have to make sure I still keep those darker colors there as well. So it's not just too flat. And particularly towards the left, if you look at the reference towards the left, there's less of that glow happening. There are some of those light, of course, yellows, but overall the lightest color is still more towards the right. So I kind of have to remember that and not to overdo that part. So what's left? Well, maybe just a little bit... Here at the bottom, if I add some details, some maybe small trees, bushes. Well, the foreground is really just grass. It still has some shadows from the trees. It still has some green, so I do want to show those shadows. Later, probably we'll just overlay it with some drier grass texture maybe. But overall, it doesn't need to attract a lot of attention. I don't want it to get a lot of attention. So very little detail here. And a little bit in the distance, kind of this dark green color, maybe a little too chromatic. But there's definitely some of it. And this darker shape is actually just a shadow that the trees are casting there. And the darker green, that's actually the trees. Of course, if you are combining two photos for the composition, you have to make sure it's still readable so that people understand what you are trying to show there. Now some of those darker green trees and maybe extend them to show that they continue, that they are not afraid to stop in front of that broken tree trunk, but they continue. And then I think I will add a road maybe or a path over there, but also want to add some more color there at the top so that they are catching some sunlight there. And of course, like I mentioned before, that mountain still has some of those trees growing. It's like overgrown, not some, but it's overgrown with those trees. And just having some texture for that would help. And right now, tops of those trees in the distance. Uh, maybe a little too light, but if we look at that reference picture on the left, the bottom one, we see how bright those are. Maybe should be a little bit kind of more orangey yellow, but it does create a little bit of a difference between this front group of trees, which is more yellow orange. So maybe it's okay. It's kind of more towards the 
light green that I was using and some texture on the mountain and I build that road in front of the trees again just creates a nice effect that we look at the distance that it's smaller things are smaller there so it creates more depth within the picture I'm going to bring a little bit of this orange in the distance but it's mixed with that darker color so it doesn't jump out too much it's just those top greenish yellows jump out but that's okay I want to show the light on those tops of the trees and here in the foreground just maybe a few blades of grass catching some light that's passing between the trees and that should be enough as far as the texture as far as the detail here and the favorite part just playing with the yellow colors and adding some light within the tree whether I need it or not and also maybe some branches the branches that also are sunlit or maybe correcting or bringing back some of that highlight on the right of the tree trunk maybe that will help and here just creating maybe a little bit more interest at least in one of the tree trunks and the others can be more suggested that is hard pastel that's why I can get that crisper edge it's a warm gray and it's pretty light while I'm working with this lighter color I don't want to create the effect like I'm trying to outline every branch or tree trunk I just want to create some highlights here and there so this is the charcoal pencil now and I want to see if I can get some of those thinner branches created a little bit kind of following those areas those little branches that I created by the negative painting with the oranges around that initial background and also just kind of loosely working with a pencil and I don't want to do too many but maybe in some areas where it just needs a little bit more to push the darker color a little bit more or create a connection with the tree trunk maybe just for more interesting shape or flow that can work pastel and charcoal work really well together and that's what I was using in the beginning just to set up the shapes very big shapes but it's also great throughout the painting if you work in a more linear style so that's lovely we all seem to have a favorite way how we apply pastel to the surface what type of pastels we like for me it's creating those painterly marks on the side of the pastel stick but for others it's maybe more rhythmic cross hatching style so find what works for you but also experiment and that's it that's where I'm leaving this beautiful golden glowing group of trees silhouetted against this purple background and if you enjoyed this video please give it a like if you got some inspiration to paint some autumn colors and please subscribe to this channel if you would like to see more videos like this